Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mass Retirees Weekly Update. Today's Friday, September 15th. I'm Sean Duhamel. Thank you so much for joining with us and tuning in again this week. Now, before I get rolling on the, this week's news, I just wanna make a couple of quick updates. First of all, Happy New Year to those members who are celebrating Rosh Hashanah this evening. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Happy New Year. And then in addition to that, I want to remind everyone that a week from today on Friday, September 22nd, we will be hosting our Mass Retirees annual meeting. It is in a new location this year. It's taking place down in Mansfield at the Envision Hotel and Conference Center. The meeting will begin at 11 a.m. I know that members start to arrive anytime from 10 o'clock on. Um, we have a couple of great guest speakers lined up. Um, David Morales, the general manager of Unicare, is planning on joining with us and will be offering some remarks. We will also be joined by State Senator Paul Feeney, who is a very close friend and ally of our association. He is a sponsor of several mass retirees' bills, and we are delighted to be in Senator Feeney's district for this, this meeting. Um, be the first time, as far as I know, that we've had a meeting down in the Mansfield-Foxborough area. Uh, the meeting location, the Envision Hotel, is very easy to get to. It's right off of Interstate 95, um, so you shouldn't have any problem getting there. And as we have been saying over the past several um, issues of, of this weekly update, as well as in our newsletter, We've got a whole host of mass retirees meetings coming up through this fall and into next year. So if, you, if you're not in and around the Foxborough or Mansfield area, don't worry, we're gonna have a meeting somewhere near you here in Massachusetts over the coming year. We're also gonna continue to hold our Teletown Hall meetings with the next Teletown Hall event taking place on Friday, September 29th at one o'clock. We will be joined by the Prim Board's Executive Director and Chief Financial Officer, excuse me, Chief Investment Officer, Michael Trotsky. So that will be a great meeting as well. But now to get into the meat of this week's message. Originally, we were planning on providing an update on the Social Security WEP and GPO situation. As I mentioned in last week's message, um, just last week, the Republican um, majority in the House of Representatives filed a Republican-backed WEP reform bill. That bill is being sponsored by um, Texas Congressman Jody Arrington, who is a very close friend and ally of the Texas Retired Teachers Association. That legislation largely mirrors what um, former Congressman Kevin Brady had been filing. In addition, there's a lot of activity nationally on H.R. 82, which is the bill that would fully repeal both WEP and GPO, which of course has always been um, the primary goal and the ultimate goal of all, all of our organizations. Um, the organizations that are spearheading that effort are doing a good job of, of driving um, attention towards these issues with the hope of bringing that bill to the House floor sometime in the foreseeable future for a vote. Now, we're not going to focus on those issues today. Instead, we're going to focus on health care here in Massachusetts. We will get back to WEP and GPO and all the various moving parts um, over the next couple of weeks. But there was a report that was just released this Wednesday um, by the Healthcare Policy Commission here in Massachusetts that is really sounding the alarm bell in terms of a increase in healthcare costs in Massachusetts. And this is of great concern to us all because as important as your pension is and the COLA and Social Security and repealing or reforming weapon GPO, all those things are extremely important. But I think all of us realize, particularly as we get a little bit older and things start to break down, um, just how important high quality and affordable health care is to everyone. It's really a universal concern. And Massachusetts over the past decade or more has done a really good job of first of all, making sure that everyone has access to health care, trying to control um, rising health care costs. We are very fortunate in Massachusetts, and my wife and I say this to each other all the time. My wife had shoulder reconstruction um, almost a year ago and a whole bunch of PT, and there are 10 physicians in the whole country who perform the procedure that she had that was invented right here in Boston. Um, five of those physicians are at Mass General. And we live in Dorchester, so it was easy access to get over there, and her PT was over there. And thank God that we live here you know, in an area with the best health care and the best doctors and the best hospitals, really anywhere in the world. We're extremely fortunate. Um, but the, the price of all that 
is the price. Um, it is very, very expensive. Now, 11 years ago, the Commonwealth created what's known as the Healthcare Policy Commission, the HPC. It was the first of its kind agency anywhere in the country with the primary focus of finding ways to control or contain the growth of healthcare spending and the growth of healthcare costs. And over the past decade or so, they've done a really good job at that. The head or the director of HPC is a gentleman by the name of David Saltz. David is a former state Senate staffer. We worked very closely with David back in 2010 and 2011 when the municipal health care reform issue was hot and heavy on Beacon Hill. And I really got to credit David with some of the provisions that the Senate implemented or, or put into that legislation back then um, which have proved to really protect public retirees and given us a voice and a seat at the bargaining table at the local level um, when it comes to municipal health insurance. So um, David is a well-recognized healthcare expert, healthcare policy expert, and for the last 11 years he's headed up the HPC. I also need to mention, and we've talked about this in the past, that last year, right on the verge of the GIC entering into the final stages of their procurement process and implementing plan design decisions and so forth, um, the HPC, um, HPC made a, in their annual report to the GIC. And within that report, they strongly cautioned the GIC to be very careful in terms of any further increases in out-of-pocket costs. Now, out-of-pocket costs, of course, are your co-payment, your deductible, which have been um, very stable and secure now for the past six years at the GIC and at the local level as well. We haven't seen any spike in those types of costs for the most part across any of the Blue Cross plans either. So things have been stable in terms of out-of-pocket costs. And one of the reasons why they've been stable is that in addition to their work of containing costs, HPC does a lot of healthcare research, analysis, um, you know, reports on, on trends. And one of the things that they've looked at is the impact of out-of-pocket costs in terms of users or retirees, active employees, choosing to utilize healthcare services. Because if you have high out-of-pocket costs, whether it's a high deductible, high copayment, you might not be able to afford to pay those bills, so you're going to avoid going to the doctor or avoid going to the hospital. And oftentimes the result of that is that people get sicker, people don't address their health care problems until they become a crisis, until they have to call 911 and the ambulance comes, and then the costs tend to be a lot more expensive than if they had just addressed that, that problem when it first occurred. So they were very careful and very cautious in, in their approach of saying to the GIC, you really need to think twice about this. And thankfully, Matt Vino and the team at the GIC and the 17-member commission um, heeded that advice and did not increase copayments and deductibles. But across the state, we are seeing a growing and an alarming trend of healthcare premiums sharply rising, out-of-pocket costs going up. The Healthcare Commission's report that just again was released this past Wednesday states that as of 2021, so two years ago, the average deductible in Massachusetts, and this is looking at all of the plans in Massachusetts, the average deductible for a family plan is $2,400. And that was back two years ago, so it could be even higher than that now. For an individual plan, that average deductible was $1,400. So if you put that in context of the $500 deductible that the GIC has in place and has had in place now for the better part of a decade or more for the non-Medicare plans, the active employee plans that some retirees are stuck in, and that's a side issue that we're going to continue to work on, but the $500 deductible pales in comparison to the, the $2,400 family deductible or the $1,400 individual deductible that we see um, across the state in many plans. And that's really counterproductive in terms of providing open and affordable access to health care. Now in terms of health care premiums, they've also been tracking those trends. So back in, in 2011, right before the commission got up and running, they have the average cost of a health insurance plan at that point, and they also looked at it in 2021. And over that 10-year span, 
the average cost of health insurance in Massachusetts rose by seven thousand, nearly seven thousand dollars a year. That's a pretty big jump in costs, and they have seen evidence that as we're continuing to emerge from the pandemic, because if you remember back in 2020 and 2021, a lot of um, elective procedures, knee replacements, hip replacements, things that maybe were not life and death, were put off or postponed until things became a little bit more stable and the vaccines had time to kick in and things really started to get back to normal. But since then, we've seen a spike in healthcare costs. Now the Health Policy Commission, part of their mandate is to set a benchmark across the state for the annual average increase in healthcare costs per capita. And the commission would like to see that cost come in at 3.1% per capita on average. Well, it is trending slightly higher than that. Last year, it trended just a, a tenth of a percent up to 3.2. But when you're talking about tenths, tenths of percents on billions of dollars being spent, that cost adds up very, very quickly. So what's to be done about all of this? Now, as I said at the outset, our primary focus here at Mass Retirees when it comes to health care has been to make sure, above and beyond everything else, that we maintain access to the highest quality and affordable health care that's available. It's very simple, very straightforward. But that being said, we're constantly being pushed and pulled over affordability versus access and quality of care, quality of plan design. Now, we have done a lot of work working very closely with the GIC, but also with the healthcare providers, whether it's Blue Cross Blue Shield at the local level or Unicare at the state level with the GIC to help them and to help them promote various plans that focus on wellness. If they can help to keep their enrollees healthier, that automatically reduces overall costs. So one of the things that we've been very focused on in terms of wellness over the past few years has been working directly with Sensio Systems and their IBIS telehealth platform. The whole idea behind IBIS is to help those retirees who are on or enrolled in Medicare who are suffering from chronic illnesses to help you better manage your health care, help you become healthier, lead a better quality of life, while at the same time lowering overall health care costs. Because if we can help keep you out of the hospital, help you to become healthier, that naturally is going to lower future health care costs without any kind of cost shifting or reduction of, of quality of care in, in the types of dr more draconian steps uh, that we saw in, in past years. Blue Cross and Unicare are also doing a lot of work just in terms of whole person, whole health, and this whole idea of just generally promoting um, wellness. And we're going to continue to focus on those sorts of things. And you'll be seeing weekly updates like this and videos in our newsletter um, talking about these various aspects. Included within the HPC report, which is published on our website, if you go to MassRetirees.com, you can read the State House News Service article on this. Also find a, a link if you choose to, to read the full report. They also make some recommendations in the report or, of steps that the state can and maybe should take to help get these costs under control. One is putting in place some type of price controls over the growth of prescription drug pricing. We know that one of the major drivers of healthcare costs, not only here in Massachusetts, but around the country, is the rising cost of prescription drugs. Now, of course, the pharmaceutical industry is dead set against any types of price controls, and we've seen that at the federal level with the hoops that Medicare is being forced to jump through, and just in terms of trying to negotiate the price of drugs. We are the only major Western country that does not have some type of controls in place when it comes to the price of pharmaceutical drugs. Now the pharmaceutical industry will argue that price controls or, or price limits will stifle innovation, um, lead to fewer innovative drugs being um, formulated. I'm not sure if I believe that or not. Um, you know, you could argue it both ways. All I know is that every time our members are going to the pharmacy, it seems to be costing you more and more. And every time we come up with new health insurance rates, or premium rates every year, the cost of prescriptions is a leading cause for those increases in your out-of-pocket costs or, or your overall premium costs. So something has to give. We've got to find a better way to address this. 
Another major problem here in Massachusetts and in many locations around the country is a shortage of qualified healthcare professionals to fill the various jobs that exist. And healthcare is a major part of the Massachusetts economy, particularly here in Eastern Massachusetts with all the hospitals and, and you know, various biotech companies, drug manufacturers, we, we have become a hotbed um, for overall healthcare industry, which is a great thing. However, it's not such a great thing if you don't have enough qualified workers to fill those jobs. And according to um, the, the, the Massachusetts Hospital Association, that there are currently 19,000 open healthcare positions in Massachusetts that need to be filled. So that is a driver of increased costs. Because if you don't have enough employees, it leads to overtime and it's just not a good thing. So those are some of the, just the basic things um, that will be worked on. And again, we'll be reporting on this more going forward, but it's something we wanted to make sure that we flagged for our members because healthcare is such a vital part of everything we do. We spend a lot of time here at Mass Retirees focused on these issues, trying to become expert as best we can on the various aspects of this. Um, so we will be continuing to work with our partners, whether it's the insurance companies, whether it's the hospitals, whether it's the GIC, whether it's the municipal um, health insurance purchasing groups around the state like Maya, um, who we work very closely with, to continue to find innovative ways that we can help our members and help the government to be able to control these costs while still providing you with the best quality and most affordable health care um, that's available out there. So with that, I'm going to sign off for today. Again, if you're available next week, if you're down in the Mansfield area, don't mind taking a little bit of a ride. We would love to see you at our meeting. But again, look to um, page three of the newsletter. It's the full list of all of our upcoming events. So if you can't make it next week, we hope to see you again in the very near future. In the meantime, take care, everyone. Happy New Year to those of you celebrating Rosh Hashanah this evening. Be well.